So today, I'm gonna show you how to turn this into this. All right, intro. There's nobody else here, it's just me. All right, so here we are in Logic Pro. Now, if you don't have any idea how this stuff works, um, I'll just give a quick explanation. Basically, these horizontal lines going across correspond to an instrument section or an instrument. If you look over here, you'll see the names. So we have our woodwinds up here. We have all of our strings here, wires, brass, and percussion. If I double click on one, it'll open up this window and you can see the actual notes that are being played. This track starts off with the strings, right? So we have this little piece that goes like this. We take that and that starts off on the cello and these blue notes here will be the cello and then there are also the brownish colored notes which are the bass. Okay, so they're kind of holding down the main rhythm there. And then you do have some violas on top of that that are just doubling the cellos, adding an extra layer. So because this is a combat track and where it plays needs to sort of slowly intensify, so we have these second violins, which are these green notes here, and they come in and start adding this upper harmony. Really simple, but it kind of tells you that something's about to happen. And then on top of that, the first violins here, they just hold this sustained note up top, which again kind of serves the same purpose. It shows you that something's about to happen and it's going to cover that whole spectrum. So after the intro there, that's when we move on to the main theme section. So the violins at this point, they double up and they take on the melody together. And then after two bars, you can see here all these notes happen underneath. And it sort of creates this like, this movement underneath, kind of makes it feel like something exciting is happening. Just makes it a little more interesting. And then as soon as that ends, they go back down, providing more of a, a rhythm in the harmony there. So then after these violins climb up, basses and cellos drop down really low, and it opens up room right here for what will be the brass. If you listen to the lower register of this, you'll hear how everything just kind of opens up at that point. And it sounds really powerful.
Okay, so for, for this brass section, we have tuba, three trombones, four French horns, and three trumpets. So if we back it up here a little bit, go back to this part, right as that main melody comes in here, right at that note, right where it hits there, is when this brass comes in, and it makes it feel full and powerful, and it sounds like this. Now, right here, we end up back at that spot where there was that gap between the strings. This is where the French horns, they split off and they're forming chords all by themselves. Okay, so that's it for those sections right there. And then there's a little bit of a choir, which is doing something actually very similar to that. And they, they're playing this. Then there is, of course, a woodwind section. And that's it for the main intro. All right, so we move on to the next section. So this introduces a new progression and a new rhythm. The basses are just holding down that root note of the chord throughout. The cello is basically playing more notes an octave above, but then here it's adding that ascending pattern, which sounds like this. The violas are doing the same thing, but they're going up. They're hitting that, that high note there. And then they're also, instead of moving up here, like the cello does, they move down and it forms an interesting little harmony. And then you can take the violins and put them over the top of that to add some additional movement. Right after that, there's a nice little change in the chords. We drop down to this D right here, and you'll hear how that intensifies things. Changes the mood a little bit here. And now the violins have this one crucial little part right here where they go up and down, and that sort of bridges these two pieces together. Okay, and then on top of that, the brass are just kind of adding some accent. You can see these, each one of these is a different trumpet.
And then the most interesting part here is actually what the woodwinds are doing. They're adding accents to those little runs, and it's really just adding extra color on top of everything. So if I solo those woodwinds, Now, if I blend the strings back in, I'll slowly bring them in and you'll hear how they work together. All right, and now we move on to what's kind of like the bridge. So it starts off with the strings just holding down that root. They're kind of establishing where we're at. As you can hear, we have some choir. This part right here where the, the chords change, that's actually the chord progression for the main theme. So what's interesting about this section is the main melody for Roscria comes in on the violins right here, but it plays it on just that root note straight through, right? So it kind of has this driving feeling like here. And then the choir connects those two sections into that chord progression, but then the main melody doesn't play, so it kind of kind of teases you a little bit if you're familiar with the theme at all. And if you're not familiar, it'll at least make it feel pretty epic. And then if you hear this this high choir part, you would your ear kind of wants this note right here to happen right here where the chord changes. But by delaying it by half a measure, it kind of like launches you up a little bit. Just to show you what I mean, I'll move it like this. But by pulling it back and having it hang there, kind of as a suspension, feels like it lifts you up a little bit in that moment. So now the second time through it repeats, but now the violins, second violins, are forming this little rhythm underneath is these green notes right here and now if we take a look at the woodwinds they're doing the same thing they were before and that's just providing support and they're kind of accenting And then of course there is a percussion section and a little bit of brass. Um, brass is kind of just adding some clusters here.
then for the percussion, rather simple. So we have a timpani and then we have some toms and other various percussion here. Companies, they're 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 hitting two notes really fast together and leaving them slightly off beat. I think sounds really natural. Then once you take everything, put it all together. And now we come to the end, which is the main theme. Take you through everything since there's a lot going on here. Basses are just... Cello is doing that run once again. Violas do the same thing, just an octave above. And then the violins double on top of that. Now the reason they're doing this and they're not playing melody is because the penny whistle plays the melody. So the strings kind of pull back and give a little bit more space for the melody to shine. The way that we made any whistle sound was with this. Basically what I did is I recorded three or so takes. So I added bends here and there, and then I kind of blended them together until I found something that I liked completely by itself with a little bit of reverb on it, That's how it sounds. So then, of course, I ran it through a program called Melodyne, and I pitched it up because a combination of my inability to play that instrument and the fact that it's so cheap, it just it didn't quite sound like it was in tune. And then I took an EQ plugin, and I cut out all the low end because you're not going to hear that. You don't need it. Most of it's just rumble from the, the vents. In the, and then I cut out pretty aggressively here some peaks that were really, really harsh. Honestly, just kind of painful to listen to. So I cut those out and then I threw a compressor on there and then two reverb plugins and it ended up like this. Now if we take that and put that back in with all those strings, it 
It actually doesn't sound half bad. Moving on from that, this is our woodwind section. And they get a little complicated, honestly, probably a little messy as far as the orchestration. Um, but this, this section is so dense that I just didn't feel it was worth the time to make everything absolutely. But this is how it sounds. Now the second time through that theme where things get a little busier, the strings also change. The violins jump back in and take the melody, but before that they walk up and it adds, just helps bridge it together, makes it feel like it's climbing. Now there is a change here in this melody from the theme origin. And it's this note right here. It drops down and I just love how that sounds, especially when it contrasts with that penny whistle. The place you can hear that counter melody the most is the cello here. If I solo that, it's very similar to what it was, but it just feels a bit more uh, final, I guess, like it's coming to an end. And then here's the choir section. And that is honestly probably my favorite part of this whole track. When that female choir comes in, you can hear that melody once again. Now going on to the brass, the trumpets have quite a bit going on here. So every once in a while you can see there's multiple notes playing at once. When there's only one note like this, that means all three of them are playing that note. So at different points in these melodies, they spread out to kind of thicken things up a little bit. Okay, now you take your French horns and they're picking notes throughout that that need to be emphasized depending on what's happening in the orchestration. Except this one part right here, you can see they go down, they start to go in a different direction. And then just like in the beginning with that main theme, they drop down and they start forming chords and it makes it sound really, really thick. If you remember it from before, they're actually, they're doing 
something a little different here. And this gets somewhat complicated. Traditionally, they're forming a chord with an octave on top, as you can see right here. But as this melody comes through in the trumpets, <clears throat> kind of clashes at times, just because there's so much going on. So I taken some of the top two horns or just the top one and they kind of split off and form that harmony on top of the chords that they're playing and it's something that you kind of have to a lot of trial and error as you're going through trying to see what works and what what sounds good and what doesn't Then on top of that, you have your trombones and tubas. And now you take everything and you put it together and you get this.